probably won't give very much news as far as what's going on here. Coronavirus in Russia. It's very uh, tight run by the state. And they make sure that, well, not a lot of information gets out. Especially if it's not favorable information to uh, the oligarchs who run the country. You know, the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, well, he sort of kind of had a very interesting approach to, well, how he's chosen to handle coronavirus in his country. And, well, Russia is kind of going through something similar as to what America went through under Donald Trump. And still, to a large part, continues to argue about and go through under Joe Biden. You know, there's this whole insane theory out there about, well, herd immunity through, well, natural immunity. It's insane. It basically prepositions the notion that, well, you should want to get infected because, well, then you'll have the antibodies in your system. Now, the first part, you wanting to get COVID-19, no, you should never want to get, well, a deadly virus. No, you should never want to contract that. The second part about having the natural antibodies if you do contract the virus, well, there's something that the apologists for that insane theory neglect to tell you. You could succumb to the virus before the natural immunities will develop in your body. It's not like you gain natural immunities overnight, like the moment you get infected with a virus, you just magically start getting better and healing yourself. You know, it usually takes time. And very well, long treatment processes. Monoclonal antibody treatment. Maybe ivermectin if they do that. Maybe hydroxychloroquine. All kinds of stuff that's experimental. And nothing really designed to, well, treat COVID. Because there is no treatment for COVID at this point in time. There is, however, a vaccine that, well, sort of kind of prevents the more serious symptoms from occurring. Not in everything. There's no foolproof in anything. But thus far, it's been proven to be the most effective tool we have against the virus. And right now, Russia is struggling to get, well, its citizens vaccinated. They're even worse in terms of their vaccination rate for fully vaccinated people in Russia than in the United States of America currently. So, at least we're beating out the Russians. We're losing in a landslide to the Chinese. 76% of their population is being vaccinated, fully vaccinated. And now they're rushing to vaccinate young kids as young as three years old. The United States just, well, got a recommendation from the FDA that it should approve vaccines for five to 11 year old kids. But China's already doing it for three year olds. And they're working towards zero COVID. That's what every country should be working towards. But we have a lot of people who are unlicensed medical professionals. And, well, they're giving their own medical opinions about things that they have no clue. And in Russia, they really have a problem with, well, trust in the government. You see, 
the government has been all over the place in terms of how they handle COVID. They haven't required any employer mandates, but they strongly encourage for well, you to at least get vaccinated. You can have two days off, but we won't mandate it. And none of the local employers outside of the larger employers who are all run by the government, none of the small business employers are mandated. Because, well, why would they? If the government, who owns the largest corporations in the country, exempts their employees from getting it, then why would a small business run the risk of mandating it to have their employees flee and go to another business that won't do that? So it would make no sense even if the small businesses did want to mandate it, that the employer of the federal government, the largest employer in Russia, wouldn't, well, mandate it. See, at least we have American leadership now that's smart enough to know that you had the mandate that employers do it. That's what's driven our rate up a little bit, but not really a whole lot. But it's helped in certain locations, in localities, in municipalities, in towns. It has helped. In Russia right now, there's 60,000 children who well, have COVID or are being treated for COVID. 13% of those kids, every eighth child in Russia of infected with COVID-19 will have long COVID symptoms, meaning their symptoms will continue and nobody knows how long. They're long haulers. Children, kids, now, every eighth child, 13% of 60,000 children have long-term disability due to COVID now in Russia. In the small little areas and townships all across Russia, hospitals have no more rooms. Even though they built new hospitals for COVID, they have a hospital that can only hold 670 patients. And right now, there's 740 patients in the hospital. Ambulances are not coming to pick up people because they're swamped. There's no, nobody to well, pick you up. There's a worker shortage too happening in Russia. Nobody wants to be out there. Nobody knows what the fuck is going on. And well, your president in Russia, Vladimir Putin, has declared a work free week starting October 30th to November 7th. One week. And guess what? He's managed to botch this idea up too. He said, well, the work free week, you see, the federal government is the largest employer. And they're exempt from, well, telling their employees that they have the work free week off. So most people will still be working because they're employed by the government of Russia. And the smaller businesses that aren't property of the Russian government, well, they haven't even told their employees whether they have a day off or not. They still don't know when October 30th is coming up shortly. So the work-free week won't be a work-free week. People will still be going to work. Kids are getting sick every day to the tune of 85 children per day in Russia are contracting COVID-19 and being hospitalized. And that's just what they're recording. They probably can't even report how bad it really is. Today alone, for the third straight day, over a thousand people have died of COVID-19 in Russia. They're probably undercounting that because they undercounted last year how many people were infected. 
Every country is probably undercounting. You have no idea how severe this might be. And you know what the problem is? Russia, well, doesn't take it seriously. At least not its leadership. You see, Russia won't require anybody to wear a mask. They won't require you to socially distance. And well, now people are lining the hospital floor because, well, irresponsible leadership by the Russian government. Everybody in their right mind knows they have to wear a mask, and they know why they have to wear a mask. Continuing not to do something when you know you should and you have to do it. The result will continue to be the same. Well, nobody knows why you have to wear the mask. You just have to wear the mask. It's a safety thing. Who knows why you have to really wear clothes? But if you go outside in all the conditions without clothes, you'll get cancer. You'll get sunburn. You'll get frostbitten. You won't make it too long in very many climates without certain amounts of clothes being worn. Now you just have to wear a mask over your nose and mouth. You know, Vladimir Putin had a whole slew of critiques about the society that we live in nowadays. And well, how being transgender and non-binary is the destruction of humanity. I mean, really. Let's pause and rewind here for a moment. We've got the former KGB officer. Now, I'm not sure if you know but the KPD wasn't delivering birthday cakes at Sweet 16 parties. These were trained assassins. So you got somebody that's probably killed a lot of people. And well, now all of a sudden he's going to lecture us about the, the preservation of humanity. I'm not going to listen to a fucking serial killer lecture us about humanity. Full stop, period. You know, in Brazil, the highest Supreme Court just ruled that the president, the current president, that Donald Trump just tonight re-endorsed the re-election in 2022. Their highest court in the land, in Brazil, found him guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity for his mismanagement of coronavirus. Dr. Briggs came out today and said that, well, 100,000 deaths were preventable in the United States if our nitwit president, you know, the one that we fired, had it just told people to wear masks. 100,000 people. He too should be taken before the International Court for war crimes against humanity. Not sure why that hasn't happened yet. That's where that son of a bitch should go too. And he too should be found guilty. You know, here's the trend that I see. Toxic masculinity driven leaders. All white men who don't know what the fuck they're doing. Governing over us. Not telling us that they don't know what the fuck they're doing. At every turn, making blunders, mishaps, because they have no fucking clue how to govern. And then, well, in order to distract you from their mismanagement, their horrible leadership and their know-nothing, reckless disregard for you as a human being. Well, they try to pit certain groups against certain groups. 
certain people against certain people. You know, instead of arresting people who identify as LGBTQIA in Russia, maybe you should have been trying to persuade them to get vaccinated. But because you've been so abusive to that community, you think that anybody in that community would trust taking a vaccine from Vladimir Putin at this point. Maybe that's why the vaccination rate is in the low 30% in Russia. Nobody's going to trust a serial killer, a person who used cyanide poison to, well, poison his rival who was running for his position. That's going to be the dude that's going to lecture us about, well, the preservation of humanity. We got to stop this bullshit. Come on. Come on. We're not playing that game. No, no, no. Russia is in real big trouble. You know, everybody's starting to see a spike again. Because it's fall. This is when people generally get sick. And well, hopefully we don't get the flu. But that's a real possibility. To have a new strain of the flu and COVID out here. And people not wearing masks. Unsafe working conditions. You know, across the board, whatever country you're in, workers are united in saying the same thing. That they're in unsafe working environments. Employers don't give a fuck. Maybe that's why there's a shortage. People feel that they're not being heard. They're not being respected. And it's true. Now, Russia, if you listen to me, you gotta wear a mask this winter. It just is what it is. You gotta wear a mask. If you still want to be here, wear a fucking mask. I don't know how to break the news to you, but you gotta wear a mask when you're around the public. When you're by yourself, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask. But when you go out to the public, you gotta wear a mask. You gotta socially distance as much as possible. You gotta sanitize and actually clean things. You know, that's why it was really unsafe to send school kids back to school. If you're not gonna wear a mask, if you're not gonna socially distance, if you're not gonna sanitize things, then well, COVID is gonna easily spread. And that's what it's done in Russia. To the point where now you need a week, a work-free week. What's one week that might or might not materialize? Really? They're locking down Moscow again. They're probably going to lock down St. Petersburg. What's a lockdown going to do if people don't trust getting vaccinated? You know, all the countries that fought and paid for millions of doses of the Sputnik V vaccine from Russia. It hasn't been delivered yet. They don't even have enough doses for every Russian. So the countries that paid for it, expecting their doses to be delivered, they don't even have that. And yet Vladimir Putin is going to lecture the whole entire world about the destruction of humanity being fought on by, well, less masculine individuals and transgender people and, well, non-binary people. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He doesn't have a clue. And, well, the only people that's paying the price are people that, well, have to live in Russia, have to live under his stupidity. Now, you kick down your door if you're a blog on YouTube that's exposing rampant corruption. He'll hound you 
if you even worked for his former adversary, the political opponent, Alexei Nieve. He'll harm you. He'll force you to leave the country. He'll uh, declare anybody that was affiliated with the political party that was founded by this challenger to be domestic terrorists. He'll hold press conferences and tell you, well, he found out the kids were planning to be at the rally and that they had training material on how to make Molotov cocktails. He'll tell you all these wild, tall tales and stories. But what he won't tell you is how badly he's mismanaged Russia to the point where 90% of the hospitals are full with COVID patients. You know, maybe there's a large opposition party in Russia because, well, the tide of your handling of, well, a deadly virus. You know, I can foresee a party, a political party, solely started in Russia on the basis of public health. Their only message is, Vladimir Putin is a public health nightmare and must be removed for the safety of every Russian citizen in the entire country who wants to live and still be on the planet Earth. I think that would be the largest political party in Russian history. Because, well, it's affecting everybody in Russia. Whether you're rich, poor, old, young, a child. COVID is infecting everybody. And everybody can clearly see that he doesn't have a clue what the fuck he's doing. Wear a mask. Socially distance. If you don't have to go around strangers, do not go around strangers. Wash your hands. Sanitize. Disinfect areas. Stay home if you're feeling sick. If you start feeling symptomatic, have a check at home. Like one of those COVID home check things. Where you can check yourself. Take your temperature frequently. You don't have a clue what the fuck they're doing. All you have to do is look to Russia to know that.